whatever it can accommodate. In our case, 66 persons, I believe. Um, and then we have the other building on the other side. It's really important, brethren, to remember also that through this, we are here not to represent our own ideals. The world is looking on. We are not here to represent our own persuasions. We are here to be the light of the world. We are here to be the light of Jesus Christ, the love of God that's flowing and showing through. And I want to encourage all of you, let us pray for each other through this season. But let us not give too much venting to our own persuasions. Instead, what would God want for his body to be? Because men and women are still dying. Men and women are still dying of sin. That's what I mean. I don't mean just of COVID-19. Men and women are still dying of sin. And if we embrace this process correctly, I remember I was speaking, not seeing him now, but I was speaking with Dion some time ago. And he was such a blessing to my heart when he reminded me, Pastor, um, when he mentioned in our conversation, you know, and it was such a joy. He said, Pastor, what the body of Christ needs to remember at this time is that after Jesus was crucified, and it was out of the very persecution that the body of Christ became stronger and spread throughout the earth. So I want to encourage you, brethren, today as we meet, let us indeed, indeed, remember the word that the Bible teaches us in a very common passage of Scripture. That is Romans chapter 8. You don't need to turn to it. It's verse 37. It's one verse. Paul writes, he says, Nay, in all these things and he had asked the question earlier what shall separate us from the love of God and he spoke about tribulation or distress or peril persecution or famine or sword sword means death by the way or nakedness and he says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors now, it's easy for us to talk about more than conquerors when things are good. But let us remember, brethren, among the words in that verse that we must know is the little two-letter word called in. In all these things. Daniel was not spared the den but he was spared death by the lions in the den. I want to encourage you today. Let us continue to find the very best ideals of the kingdom of God made possible for us to manifest by his Holy Ghost. And today as we worship, may God indeed grant you the desires of your heart, but even more importantly, may he accept our offerings as a sweet-smelling savor. May he receive it as a worthy offering. Father God, today, would you stand with me, please, just before I hand over to the worship team. So, Father, today, you know, we, we are indeed so grateful, very, very grateful for your mercies and for your kindness. We are grateful for your keeping power. We are grateful for the remnant. We are grateful for the privilege of being able to navigate these times alive. God, even now, we pray for uh, Aldith and Brother Leroy, God, as his father has gone, has passed, and we are in the land of the living. I pray that you comfort them, comfort the family, God. Mama Daisy has gone. I pray, O oh God, for Pamela, the siblings, O oh God, and the family, God, in the name of Jesus. 
for death is not an easy thing to deal with yet oh God we must deal with it so God I commit these families into your hands God and I say strengthen them Lord in your word you said you would comfort those who mourn comfort them and God Lord even those who are hearing my voice oh God whether in the buildings or at home Oh God, in the situations that they may be dealing with, in the situations, oh God, that may be causing them grief, where unbeknownst to anyone, they too are mourning, perhaps not because of a death, but because of a serious declining domestic situation, perhaps because of an illness, perhaps because of, 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 of a lack of income, perhaps because of a loss of job and, and there, there seems to be no future oh God I pray that you comfort God in, in this oh God it is my desire God that we worship you with the acceptable offering so God every one of us wash us oh God in your blood let it be oh God that we do not slip into familiarity with your holy presence to the point oh God where we ignore your majesty and bow before you in holy reverence oh God today I pray that you take charge of this meeting oh God today I pray father in the name of Jesus that you oh God anoint and empower every singer every musician the preacher God in the name of Jesus I pray God that shackles truly be broken I pray God that even as you break us free from the things oh God that we have grown accustomed to that are not defining aspects of our function in the earth as the warring body of Christ that takes the kingdom violently I pray God in the name of Jesus that you help us God to display to, to allow to manifest let your Holy Ghost manifest oh God that we would understand that the weapons of our warfare and the violence as declared by Jesus is not uh, military violence it's not physical violence but God's spiritual violence may we war together as a united body against the plan of the enemy but may we, O oh God, embrace your process and truly come out of the fire brighter, stronger, more holy God and more in the shape of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. And in all these things, may that revelation grab us, God. May that revelation sink deep within us, Jesus. Have your way today. Bring glory to the name of Jesus and enable us to contribute to the establishing of his kingdom. God, I thank you for those, oh God, who sign in online, oh God. God, even Cheryl T in Canada, God, I pray, for Lord, that the message of the gospel will continue to spread. For that is what you have us here for. Make it so, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. May God richly bless you. A pleasant good morning to all. And welcome. We believe that it is through Jesus we can freely enter into the presence of God. Let us believe that together as we sing to the one who is worthy of our worship. Let's press on. Hallelujah. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day still praying as i onward bound lord plant my 
my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Cain, unstable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no, my heart has no desire to stay where thou shall rise. And first as may, though some may dwell, some may dwell. Where these upon my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Cain, unstable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world. Though Satan darts at me, at hurt, at me, I hurt. For faith has caught the joyful song. The song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on pain, unstable land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, grant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a glimpse of glory bright but still i pray till rest have come lord lead me on to higher ground lord lift me up lord lift me lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on pain unstable land a higher plane that i have found lord let my feet on high I want to live above the world. I want to live above the those Satan's darts I fear at hurt. For faith has caught, for faith has caught the joyful song, the song of saints on higher. Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up, and let me stand by faith on Canaan. Oh, table and a higher plane. A higher plane that we have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Lord, lift us up, Lord, lift us up. And let us stand by faith on by faith on Canaan's table land. A higher plane that we have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. A higher plane, a higher plane that we have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, we bless your name, O God. Hallelujah. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto Jesus Christ, the Lamb. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days from every nation all of creation we will bow before the ancient of days every tongue every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted O god and your kingdom shall not pass away Oh, ancient of days. Oh, blessing and honor. Blessing and, blessing and honor. honor. Glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, From every we nation, gather to all of creation. We'll bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and, and earth shall declare your glory every knee will bow at your throne in worship and you will be exalted O god and your kingdom shall not pass away O ancient of days your kingdom shall reign your kingdom shall reign over all the earth sing unto the ancient of days for none can but none can 
your matchless word, and we will sing unto the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign, it shall reign forever and ever, and we will sing unto the ancient for none can compare to your matchless word. Lord, we will sing unto the ancient of Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. And you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom, your kingdom it shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O ancient of days, you reign, O ancient of days. exalting Jesus and giving him the name that is above all names. Hallelujah. Lord, we return to you and we surrender. Hallelujah. We return to you. We're coming back to the heart of worship. When the music fades and all is stripped away and we simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. Lord, you search much deeper, you search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. And Lord, we're coming back, I'm coming back to the heart of and only it's you. all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. King of endless words. It's all 
How are you doing? Do you feel like a conqueror? Yeah? This is one of the times where we have to be really glad that as believers we cannot afford to operate by feeling. We need to reach in and find the strength that God will provide. He never, he never takes us through anywhere that he cannot keep us. Amen? Amen and amen. Glory to God. All right. So um, I've got some good news today in that um, some of you, or by now hopefully all of you, would know that on a Thursday afternoon we post what we refer to as Moments of Truth. It's a digital series, um, Moments of Truth with Pastor David from Maranatha Christian Assembly. That's posted on our Facebook page. But the good news, in addition to that, is that on Tuesday coming, we will be launching our, premiering our second digital series. And this one will be called Encounters with Maranatha Christian Assembly. And our very own Karen Brebner will be doing that first episode. All right? Um, sometime during the day, we will post it. Um, that will not be live, but you will be able to check it and see it. So please, um, I'm excited about this uh, for a number of reasons. And I'm trusting that even without me taking the time to list the reasons that you are excited also. All right. Um, I, I, you know, God really went before us and prepared us. And at the same time, we still have to play catch up in a very real way. But we will embrace all the all that God has allowed us in this technological age to declare his gospel. And I, I saw that first episode that Karen did, and I do want to encourage you to continue to pray for this young man and his family. Uh, I know all of us, all of us in a very real way, can say God is not finished with me yet. So I don't mean to be cliche, but God is certainly not finished with Karen as yet. And um, I'm grateful to God for that. So please, that's what time? Tuesday. Well, what day? Tuesday. All right, so before you go to bed on Tuesday night, we may be posting it either in the morning or in the afternoon, but before you go to bed Tuesday evening, it's going to be short, just like Moments of Truth. Please check it out and share the link. Again, every Sunday, I want to encourage us. We do not need to have uh, uh, anybody else's members. All right? We are interested in the salvation of soul. Eh? So you've got an unsaved friend, all right? an unsaved acquaintance, or somebody that you met, send the link. All right? You've got an unsaved family member, send the link. Are you getting me? Amen. All right? That's what, and uh, you'll be doing your part to help us as we. So that's called encounters. And of course, Wednesday night, we um, will be uh, our prayer and Bible study time. We will start praying at 6.30, as we usually would. Um, but instead of transitioning into Bible study as we did, like on, sun, on Wednesday gone, which we have not finished that, we actually we, we were discussing communion. We'll continue that, but not this Thursday, not this Wednesday night, because we have Sister Joy. Remember when we did the scenarios, we had Sister Joy create the scenarios with the questions that deal with life's issues. It had domestic abuse, you know, sexual abuse, the whole... You, 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 you all were there? Hmm? All right? Okay, so we'll have Sister Joy and myself again on Zoom, and um, please uh, be there. All right? Sign in and uh, be there, and let's all participate. That's going to be really, really, really great. Right, um, and on on August the twenty second. Now that's a Saturday. This, that's a Saturday. If you feel, if you're convinced, forget about feeling. Remember, I just said we we don't operate with feeling. All right. Um, if you are convinced or dealing with the conviction that you can be of assistance to the body of Christ in service at this time. Uh, particularly in the areas. Uh, Maranatha, wrapped up in the entire evangelistic circle, from prayer, prayer personal witnessing, evangelism to the community, the, what we know as street crusades or street meetings, follow-up discipleship, deliverance, right back to full circle. Um, 
all of that requires communication. As a matter of fact, prayer is communication with God, and none of the rest is going to happen unless we can communicate each with the other and with God's Spirit. Are you following me? Yeah? So, in our drive to continue to make ourselves relevant and be able to execute the mandate that God has put upon us, uh, then we'll be having this training session on, on August 22nd from 9 a.m. till around 4. Right? It may be built to finish a little earlier, but it's not just to come. Now, the, the, I, I am sure that you would agree with me if I said, if you know somebody really wants to do something for God, they'll be happy to pay a little hundred dollars for it, particularly if they be fed. I know if I just said that statement first, I'm sure you would agree with me. Because what we want, we pay for. But somewhere along the line, you know, not in this church, in the church down the road and, you know, the churches of, of yesterday, we have the idea that, you know, as long as I'm doing it for the church, then the church should pay for it. So the thing is, yes, in this case, the church is going to pay for it. All right? At the same time, it's going to be very demanding, not just the day. The day is the smallest part. This is why I started by, if you feel convinced in your heart that you'll be doing this for God. I heard a terrible story. I was speaking to a gentleman earlier this week. And um, I won't call the church that he goes to. He said, um, because I had to have a meeting with him, and um, he, I, I took out my mask, and well, it was him and another gentleman I had to meet with, all right? And um, next thing you know, as I pull out mine, he is taking out his own, and I'm jumping on my van, you know. So I said, you know, I really hate these things. I really hate them, but part of what's required, you know, as, as I put them on my whole top and bottom, it begins to get really, really wet, and it, 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 that's why I'm always here in black, because it would look like I'm drooling any other color, it just gets really, really, really wet, really bad, and he said, you know, this thing is really bad, so I'm thinking he's thinking about COVID-19, instead, what he said, he said, you know, in the assembly that I go to a couple of weeks ago, just about two weeks ago, we almost didn't have a service. What do you mean? Well, the guy who had a function, I won't even talk about the function, the guy had a, fun had a specific function to do that a lot hinged on him, and he didn't want to wear no mask. And the pastor and the board and everybody said, no, well, hear what, when you're by yourself up in the room, we will allow you to not have, but once you're passing through the setup, we'll ask that you put it on. No, I save, Christ set me free, and my boy, stay home with the, with the Lord's key. So they couldn't do anything. You know? Let us not use our freedom in Christ to give vent to the flesh. All right? Let's not do that. Let's not do that. You know? It's a real, real trying time for all of us. But as, as the Bible tells us, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. All right? The word is going to go. And um, I encourage you to join with us. Let's spread the word. Let's spread the word. Let's live for God. And um, if you do feel um, convicted that you want to be part of our communications team, what we're talking about here, we have Ronel, will be with sound. We have Curtis with music. And, well, worship, which includes the, the voices as well as the, the instruments. And we have young Niger and Elijah, and we're spreading it. It will include training with the um, audiovisual projector. That, that's what they call that, yes? I'm forgetting. Um, I'm hearing them talk about so many things now, I'm forgetting which one. Yeah, that, that is the audiovisual projector. And then we'll be trained with the camera, and that, that's both the film ca movie camera, if you call it that, and the still photography training not for you to take and run with by yourself, but for you to continue to serve in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And amen. All right, that's August 22nd. You can see me, see Brother Ronel, see um, Sister Rhysia. Um, I 
think Curtis is busy that morning, but you could see him also. All right? Good. Uh, you may have noticed by now that um, Pastor Terry and his family are not with us. Um, you know, when in, in, in the move up, in the run up to this, we thought that we would have more time with more, uh, you know, expression. But it's okay, you know. So Pastor Terry is part, as at this point, a part of a team that has been asked to give assistance to the Charlottesville Assembly. So that's why you're not seeing him. Please remember to be, or his family, please remember to be in much prayer for him and his family. Can I count on you? All right, great. All right, so do we have any visitors in the building today? Any visitors? First time you're here or first time in a very long time. By the way, we're not, we're not inviting people again, or? All right? Yeah. Yeah. I know, I, I hate to be referring to Elder Irvin every time I talk about back in the old days. Make him sound as if he's the oldest person here, which I'm not sure that he is. You know, but Elder Irvin, I'm sure you can remember back in the day, and this was church, you know, where it was a joy to invite people. And when... You know, and that's not just for crusades, but even all the time. As a matter of fact, in the, the assembly I grew up in, when we had some of these special meetings, or sometimes they would actually give out a little token, not big prize or thing, but it was a big energetic thing, you know. And um, there was a brother by the name of Stephen Graves. Everybody used to tease, squeeze Stephen and vex with Stephen, not vex in the real sense that he would vex, because what he was, he was a maxi driver. And he had, the big, he had this big 25-seater maxi. And all through the day, my boy witnessing, all through the day, every time somebody come in, so every Sunday morning, my boy bringing in people, pulling down the maxi. You understand? And you just have a lot of fun. Brethren, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. All right? That's what we are here for. So please, um, uh, if, if I appreciate and respect the convictions of many who um, are of the view that it's not safe and they don't want to come out. I'm fine, bless the Lord. But do not allow your reactions to cause you to behave as not part of the church. All right? So we still meet to fellowship. We still um, give our tithes and give our offerings. And we still do all of these things as part of the body in the earth. Amen? So that means we have no visitors. But just in case um, we have anybody online, please know that we will. Uh, we praying when I pray and certainly when... And then I pray, we ask God, Lord, for those who we do not see, and those who we just see a name may be, you know. So bless the Lord. Amen? Okay, amen. Now, we want to move into our communion service, and um, I, I was just, um, it was just pointed out to me that a number of us may have forgotten that today's communion. Now, I want to make this very clear. Um, even before... COVID-19, views were expressed that the cutting up of the bread and this small glass where everybody had a point to is not the way to go. Some folk had real issues with it, right? But gratefully, and I'm thankful to God that they continue to flow with it. So now, in the time of COVID-19, when we ask you to bring, it's not because we wish to discontinue what we have done, but again, we don't want to offend and appear as if. So within the context of the guidelines, we want to stick with. That being said, if you haven't brought anything this morning, meaning you haven't brought any of the emblems, we have made some provision for you. So please just let the ushers know. Amen? Amen? Amen. I, I, I know it's a little tough to say, you know, but, you know, amen. You can still say amen through your mask. All right? Glory to God. All right, so we want to go into our communion service and um, uh, give you a time. I'll have... Just, no, no, just to say, we should have ours. If you need, indicate, that's what I'm saying. You can stand or raise your hand and our ushers will be able to treat with you. Yes? Amen. All right, either one. So as you all are checking this time, please make sure you look around for those who may not have brought their emblems, right? 
Jared, come down. I'm not, I'm not understanding the sign language. Come. Hallelujah. Could you imagine what the earth will be like when God permits the angels to open the seals? Look to your neighbor say, we, you better make sure you leave before. Huh? Because this ain't nothing compared to that. Jared, it sorted out? I'm not here. Ronald, somebody please come and... We have folk down here. Oh, all right, good. We have... of you who do not have if you'd be kind enough to indicate now again so that the ushers would if you don't if you didn't bring the emblem for yourself healing stand ready uh, and thank you hallelujah right now as we taught on Wednesday gone this is a very very reverent time, meaning the communion service. Not only because God sent Jesus to die for us, but he demonstrated the unity. In other words, he didn't just die for us so we could get to heaven and live on different sides. He died for us so that we could be grafted in to the household of faith, the brotherhood, if you want to call it that, where we embrace the office of sonship, male and female, to them that believe, to them give you power to become sons of God. Now, because the body is collective, it means when Jesus broke the bread and gave it out to individuals, the, the disciples that were around him, not only were they the closest people to him, but he was demonstrating that my body would be broken and this is now how my body would be broken in little pieces and was whipped and beaten and all of that. But the joy, because of the resurrection, Jesus was able to conquer it and we became part of the family of God. So Paul is able to write to us and tell us for this reason we must discern the Lord's body while we show his death till he comes as we will we, that, that's what we're doing because it wouldn't be possible without Jesus dying but we discern the Lord's body correctly that means that person next to you it means that person in front of you it means that person behind you and it means that person who you're struggling with because you can't take them Those things must not be named among us. Healing. Let's worship God. Hallelujah.
ground His body lay The light of the world by darkness lay Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave He rose again And as He stands Thank you, God, that you unveiled our eyes and caused us to see Jesus as Lord. And you broke our hearts that we could discover to surrender to your Lordship. So, Father God, today, as we obey your word, help us, God. As we show the Lord's death till he returns, help us, God, today to love each other to truly discern your body well. May we take it today as a spiritual pill. In Jesus' name. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Let us eat with thanksgiving. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine 
until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So important is it. Let us drink with thanksgiving. Glory to Jesus. We reverence your name, Father. Hallelujah. We reverence your name. We give you praise. We thank you for the work of the blood. At this time, we want to continue worshiping the Lord with our morning's tithes and offerings. We will not be bringing it as we usually do. And um, we encourage those of you who may be at home, if even you don't have something to give, clasp your hands and let us pray. You, those of you hearing me here and in the building next door, hold your offerings in your hands. Hold your, the Lord's tithes in your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Father, we are about to give you a small part of what you have given us, what you've helped us to earn. God, you've given us capacity to earn. And you've opened doors for us to become employed. And God, you provide for us. God, if there be those, God, today who are not employed, who do not have, but their hands are clasped, oh God, in faith, oh God, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you bless them. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, now that you receive what we are giving to you. Oh, God, let it rise, oh God, as this act of faith and obedience. For you said you would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And God, Lord, let this act of faith and obedience, oh God, rise as a sweet-smelling savor to your nostrils. And may you truly receive it as worship. For God, Lord, we desire to worship you. We don't just desire to give for the sake of giving, but we want to give because it's you. Because you taught it, you commanded it. And Lord God, we say thank you. Again, God, those who are yearning and ready to work in this time where millions of people are jobless, God, Lord, we pray that as you preserved Israel in the land of Goshen, I pray God in the name of Jesus, you preserve your people. Provide income provide employment God in the midst of economic downturn in the midst oh God of 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 joblessness work it out God and let it be that we return as the the the, the one non-jew to return to give you praise the one Samaritan to return to give you praise and all the glory father receive it in Jesus name amen Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. 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 Oh, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. He is the rock on which I stand. The rock on which I stand. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. Oh, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. He's above, he's above, below, before, behind, and around me, and inside me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me, and inside me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. Oh, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. To see my Jesus someday, I got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus.
Thank you, thank you. You may have your seats. We bless the off uh, giving to the Lord already. Uh, just before the word, I would like to invite. Um, last time I, I referred to her as emerging Sonia. Now I say young Sonia. Please give her a round of applause as she comes to minister to us in song. You do better than that. Come on. Hallelujah. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness. We thank him for life. We thank him for everything that he has done for us. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. All, not some, but all the days of our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's running, 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 running,
because we're going live and there's some things I want to say that it's about specific individuals here so I don't want to say it now but I will say Sylvia I want to see you right after the, the whole team there that's the worship team on Seoul and Mahmoud and Bernadette, Bernadette right before when, when, when we close up when we finish preach and we close it off after make sure you don't go that's the worship leaders thing Sylvia and you all all right bless the Lord yeah, Stretch your hands God. towards Sylvia. Father Hallelujah. God, today in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh God, Lord, you do all things well. Jesus. You do, God, what we cannot yeah, interpret, God. what we cannot understand. Yeah, all we need, do God, yeah, God, is follow you and obey you. Jesus. Sometimes, God, that's kind of tough. Jesus. So God, today I pray in the name of Jesus that you strengthen your daughter today. In the name of Jesus, and that which you have deposited in her being, in her spirit, deliver it with the unction that flows from on high. That she and all, when she gets back home, will marvel at the power, oh God, of her, her, her God, operating in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Jesus, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. 
Oh God, God has been faithful. That was a good song, Sister Sonia. All our life he has been faithful. And that is something we ought to give God some praise for. So let us all just stand and give God some praise. Oh God, you have been good to us, oh God. Father, we give you praise. We bless your name. We worship you, God. You have been good to us, oh God. You have been faithful, oh God. God, you love us dearly. And by that we are grateful, oh God. We worship you this morning. We glorify your name. We bless your name. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace. We thank you, oh God, for your faithfulness. Oh God, you are good, you are good, you are good, and your mercies endure it forever. Oh God, you are good, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Words cannot express how I feel about my God. Words cannot express, but God is good. All the time he is good and he's faithful to us. Oh God. Brothers and sisters, I'm encouraging you all. As I'm encouraging myself, let us be faithful to God as well. God is good. He is good all the time. He is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say a pleasant good morning to each and everyone. God is indeed a faithful God. God is indeed a good God. He is really, really good. God, you are good. I just want to thank Pastor Gavara for allowing me to share with you this morning. God is really good. You know, sometimes you have so many challenges, but what, when you really put your trust and Lay your cares upon God. He's going to take care of you. He's going to see you through. I just want to encourage you this morning. God will see you through. Despite of what you might be going through. You might think that nobody is there. But I encourage you this morning. Look to Jesus and live. Hallelujah. The scripture I am about to read from you this morning. One verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. A popular verse. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Father God, this is your word. As I come before you, O oh God, to minister your word to your people, O oh God, I ask you to bless it. I ask you, O oh God, that you're going to touch the hearts of the hearers here today. Those who are in the building, those who are in the new building, and those that are looking at us on our Facebook page. Father, I ask you, O oh God, to minister to their hearts right now, O oh God. Give them that receptive heart that they, O oh God, could receive the word and be blessed. This I ask, O oh God, as I commit myself into your hands, I commit this sermon into your hands, this rest of the service into your hands. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Hallelujah. The theme I want to speak to you about this morning. As a matter of fact, I want you to tell yourself, it is time for me to step out of my comfort zone. It is time 
to step out of your comfort zone. Being comfortable in life is very important. Everybody wants to be comfortable and everybody should be comfortable. Whether it is in your social life or your personal life. But what about your Christian life? Are you comfortable in your Christian life? Are you comfortable in your Christian life? Do you make the sacrifices in your Christian life? Do you make any sacrifices at all in your Christian life? Are you willing to step out of that comfort zone? Like the Bible heroes like Nehemiah, Abraham, Paul. They step out of their comfort zone in order to fulfill purpose. As a believer, there are signs in your life that will tell you you need to step out of your comfort zone to fulfill purpose. There are things in your life that you need to look at. The first thing that you would look at as a believer for you to understand that it's time to step out of your comfort zone is the one. Have you ever witnessed to somebody in a long time? Have you ever witnessed to an unsafe person, a co-worker, a friend? Have you ever done that? If not, you are comfortable where you are. And it's time to step out of that comfort zone. How often you study God's word? How often you have to look into that? And whenever you read the Bible, if you only take out the nice things and apply it to yourself and the part that talks about sin and judgment and forgiveness, you ignore that we need to check ourselves. We need to check ourselves. If you are not concerned about your neighbor or your friend, if you're not concerned about their spirituality, you've got to do something. If you are not coming to church with a high expectation to receive something from the word that is preached, and instead you're coming to church to criticize, to condemn, to talk about this one, talk about that one, criticize the worship song, the worship leader, you need to check yourself. You need to check yourself. If you're not concerned about the needs of others, check yourself. Check yourself. It does not pay your tithes. You need to check yourself. You know, sometimes, yes, we know things are hard. But the Bible said we, that we must pay our tithes. You know, sometimes you get your salary, you do all that you have to do, and you give God the change, but remain part of the change. These are things that we ought to look at. Once we don't wait on God and hear God's voice, we need to check ourselves to see if we need to step out of that of our comfort zone our comfort zone is a hindrance to our success it's a hindrance to our success if you stay and remain in your comfort zone you will never fulfill God's purpose in your life you would never leave your current situation In order to step out of your comfort zone, you have to realize why you are where you are. Hallelujah. We cannot become what God wants us to be if we stay where we are comfortable. If we stay where we are, we will never be able to accomplish God's purpose in our life. 
And one thing that keeps us in our comfort zone is fear. Fear keeps us. It binds us. It keeps us down. Fear is a desire to be comfortable in your surrounding, even if you don't like where you are and what you are doing. We as believers need to please God. We need to please God. And most times to please God, he puts us in an awkward and in a tight position that we need to seek God for direction. We need to seek God for direction. And one thing I could tell you that my God does not like lazy people and people who make excuses. In the book of Exodus chapter 3 and 4, when God told Moses he wanted him to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses started to make excuses. He started to make excuses just because he didn't want to fulfill purpose. He did not want to answer the call of God on his life. So he started to make excuses. And when you read the book of Exodus chapter 3 and 4, I picked up five excuses that Moses made. The first excuse, he said, I am not an adequate for the task. Yes. You of yourself would never be adequate for the task. But the scripture that I just read, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And once you have Christ on your side and depend on him, yes, you can do it. Hallelujah. God promised Moses, he said, I will be with you. He said, I will be with you. The same God that was with Moses then is the same God will be with you as well. If you only step out of your comfort zone and look to accomplish what God wants you to do. The second excuse Moses made, he said, I don't know enough. Moses was afraid of the Israelites. He was afraid if they asked questions, he might not have all the answers. But I'm here to tell you that God told Moses, he said, tell them that I am that I am. And the I am have sent you. Don't worry if you don't know all the answers. Once you know that it is God, once you apply yourself with the word of God, and once you walk in God's direction, he's going to equip you. He will equip you. Moses go on and he make another excuse. He said they won't take me seriously. But God had already promised Moses that they will listen to you. He said they will listen to what you have to say. Because what Moses had to do is through Christ. He was never alone. And he will never be alone. Moses also started to make other excuses. He said, I cannot speak. I'm not a man of good words. But God assured him that he will help him and he's going to tell him what to say. He's going to tell him what to say. Moses then said, I am not willing. He said, send someone else. If you realize all the excuse that Moses made, God gave him promises and assurance that he can do all things through Christ who strengthened him. God gave Moses all those promises and assurance. We tend to make excuses because we are not willing to step out in faith or to step out from our comfort zone to accomplish what God wants us to do. So we make excuses. But here what Thessalonians 3 verse 6 and 7 said. He said, now we command you brethren. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourself know he for yourself know how he ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Paul warned us. He wants us to keep away from these orderly people because they have this lazy attitude and they like to give excuses. But I'm here to tell you that God dislikes excuses and laziness. Many times we make excuses from church responsibilities. When we are called upon to do something for the church, we make excuses. Regardless of why you are where you are, we are accountable to God. We are accountable to God and we as believers need to put our focus and our emphasis on pleasing God and not man. We must put all our emphasis on pleasing God. So from the scripture that I've just read, I just want to share with you three points. In stepping out of your comfort zone, the challenges we normally meet. What happens when we decide to step out of our comfort zone? But God gave us assurance. He gave us assurance that he will be with you. He gave us assurance. And the first point I want to share with you this morning. Sometimes to step out of your comfort zone, it might be sudden. It might be sudden. Once you are going through some changes in your life that you do not understand, it means that God may be stirring you out of the old and to bring you new and better things. God is taking you from, from there to somewhere. Sometimes it may look as though you miss out in life. It may look as though, well, this is nonsense. But if you look into the future and keep that attitude of faith and expectation, then God can open, a, open doors for you. He can open the right door. Hallelujah. God told Abraham to leave his homeland and go to a new place. A place where he had never gone before. At the time, I'm sure that did not make sense to Abraham. Because he was comfortable where he was. He was comfortable with his family members. He was comfortable in his own space. Abraham could have stayed where he was. But you know what? Abraham trusted God. And Abraham knew once God took him from somewhere, he will provide. He's going to put him in a better place. So he trusted God. And Abraham obeyed. So Abraham and his family and his nephew, Lord, they, they packed all their things and they, they go. They headed for this unknown place. He did not know where he was going. He got instructions on the way. You could just imagine how Abraham could have been exercising his faith from leaving your homeland to somewhere where you don't know. You don't know who you're meeting across. You don't know what is taking place. But he decided to pack up. He obeyed God and he went When he got to that land, Abraham and Lot have to know pathways. They have to pathways. And there came a time that Lot chose which direction he's going first. And the land that Lot chose was, be it was a beautiful land. And the land that Abraham got, he didn't have a choice to choose it. It looks as though it was a desert. And I am sure 
I didn't read that, but I am thinking in my mind. Abraham must be saying, but God, you call me to go there. And we are here now. And Lot chose the better part of the land. You could just imagine. Sometimes you might think that God is so unfair. You might think that God is unfair. You know you're following God. You know you're, you're living a certain kind of life. And you're trying to obey the word of God. But sometimes it looks whenever you get into a position, it looks as though it doesn't make sense. It looks as though it doesn't make sense. But what I love about Abraham, Abraham did not even try to bargain with Lot to say, well, you know, God called me and, you know, I should have chose first. And he didn't try to bargain with Lot. He trusted God. And that is the kind of trust and that is the kind of faith God wants us to put in him. After you know what God told Abraham in Genesis 13, verse 14 and 15, he said, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where you are to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And all the land that you see, I will give you and your offspring. What an amazing promise. To see that God took you from somewhere. You don't know what you're going to meet and he promised you all the land for you and your offspring. God is waiting to fulfill his promise to you today. He's waiting to fulfill his promise to you. Hear what Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 says. He said, we can make our own plans, but the Lord determine our steps. We can make our own plans, but God determine our steps. Hallelujah. I could tell you about that. I had an experience. There was... Many years ago, we had a business in Canby, number one. And we had a stockpile there and everything. Because, you know, having... We had a stockpile in Canby, number one. And our plan, my husband and I, our plan was to extend that business and get more vehicles and all sorts of things. Sorry he's not here today. <laughs> but God is still good. You know, we, that was our intention, to establish this business and expand it and so forth. But yet we was experiencing some difficulties, some challenges. But there was something that I thought, you know, could have worked out. But we got a letter one morning that we have to leave the premises, remove all the materials that we have there to shut down the business, close up the office and move within 14 days. That was sudden. Imagine you're wondering what is going to happen. When I got that letter that day, I took it. I didn't tell my husband anything that day. I took the letter and I went home and I prayed. I spent some time in prayer and fast because, you know, you have just made investment and you're wondering, how am I going to make it if I'm going to close down business now? But man, my plan was different from God's plan. My plan was different from God's plan. Out of nowhere, a gentleman came and he said, Sylvia, are you interested in such and such and such? That was another drama. I said, yes. And out of that situation to move from there, God built a new business in our life. A new business was built in. 
You know what I am saying this to say? That you know sometimes to step out of our comfort zone, we just get some sudden decision. But God is, was in the plan. That was God's way of allowing me to move from here to there. It might seem as though you do, it doesn't make sense and you don't understand how God operates, but that was God's way. That was God's way to open another door. That was his way. And I just thank God daily for that person. When one door closed, another one opened. But I want to tell you something today. When you think that you are done to nothing, God is up to something. When you think you are done to nothing, God is surely up to something. I want to encourage you today to put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus and trust him. He's going to lead you in the right path. The second point I want to share with you. In order to step out of your comfort zone, it could be very demanding. It could be demanding. God demands so much, of, uh, so much from us when he wants us to step out of our comfort zone to fulfill purpose. Look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah had a great responsibility. A lot of demands was on him. He was asked to um, build the walls of, uh, of Jerusalem. He was also asked to take care of the king. And yet he was to restore the faith of the people. That was great demand. That was great demand. Although God's requirements may be demanding, God still expects us to do our job well. He expects us. Hear what Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says. It said, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Paul encouraged Christian that whatever we are called to do, remember that we are called to serve. We are doing it as unto God. We are doing it as unto God and not unto men. Nehemiah also put his life at risk. He put his life at risk because he had a responsibility towards the king. He had a responsibility towards the king. He was to make sure that he tastes everything that the king would have to eat. Make sure that he don't get poisoned. That is a great demand. How many of us will do that for your pastor, your brother, your sister. How many of us? How many of us? I want to say today as a leader, you always in the front line of battle. So let us appreciate our leaders. Let us appreciate our bosses. God requires so much from them. And there are times when some of us might be relaxing and might be playing and might be on game. Our pastor, our leader in authority might be seeking God's face, calling upon him for direction to lead the people. And that was exactly what Nehemiah, Nehemiah was doing. And in order to fulfill God's given responsibility, we must seek God for guidance and direction. And the best way to seek God is through prayer. Through prayer. And listening to the voice of God. 
listening to the voice of God, when you communicate with God, oh God, when you pray, you give the communicate with God, it builds relationship. It builds relationship. God wants us to have a committed relationship with him. Nehemiah was a man of prayer. Nehemiah got opposition from his enemies and even from his own people. Sometime as a leader, when you're getting opposition from your own people, you must you just think and wonder why. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes when you get those opposition, it means that your people have turned their eyes away from God and thinking about themselves. I want to encourage you today. Let us seek God in everything. Let us don't oppose authority. God is good. God is good. Nehemiah ignored the people. He ignored all that was going on around him. And he poured his heart out unto the Lord to bless the Jews. Hallelujah. He poured out his heart so that he could bring spiritual judgment on his enemies. I want to encourage every leader here today. If God gave you an assignment or a mandate and you're getting opposition and you are being discouraged, I encourage you this morning to be as fearless as Nehemiah. Nehemiah did not allow himself to be intimidated by the opposition. The walls were built and was completed. But it takes a lot from Nehemiah. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of responsibility. It takes from him. Nehemiah de demands perseverance. He demands courage. His responsibility demands courage and perseverance. It demands patience and love. It demands endurance. I am here to encourage you today that once you got to step out of your comfort zone, it's not going to be easy, but God promised to be with you. Nehemiah seek God at all times. He was a man of prayer. He seek God and God came through for him. The walls were built. The walls were built. The third point I want to share with you today is once you step out of your comfort zone, trust me, it's going to be painful. It will be painful. We all experience pains in life. Whether it is physical pain or emotional pain. I want to encourage you today that there is purpose in your pain. There is purpose in your pain, in all of your pain. Whatever pain you might be going through or if you're going through pain, that does not say God don't love you. God still loves you. God still loves you because God does want you to use that pain and that hurt to bring glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of pain. Because of pain and hurt. God's name will be glorified. God's name will be glorified because he has so much in store for you. I could tell you about pain. I mentioned before that my husband is not here. I lost my husband about two years ago and that was painful. 
it was painful. And you know, sometimes you still feel the pain in your heart. But you know what? That pain that I went through, it drew me closer to my God. It drew me closer to God. And you know, not that I do not understand, you know, sometimes I don't want to understand how things happen. You know, and in that pain, I see God. And I got up one morning and I said, God, I said, God, you took my husband from me. You're not going to take my husband without putting something in place. I challenge God. I say you have to put something in place because if you is God, you could have saved him. I say you is God, you could have saved him. But God took him away from me. And I am sure this is what God put in place for me. I want... God is good. I want all you to understand me. I am not saying that I'm happy he's gone. I missed him dearly. I wish he could be here. But if he was here, I would have remained in my comfort zone and couldn't see what God has in store for me. And that pain caused me now to start to fulfill God's purpose in my life. It's not easy. Sometimes we go through pain to bring out the best in us. We go through pain. God has our life in our hands. Hannah went through a lot of pain because of her barrenness. And Peniah gave her time of her life. But God heard Hannah cry, and a king was born. King Samuel was born. Paul also went through pain and suffering. He was arrested, he was beaten, he was imprisoned, he was ridiculed. Yet Paul continued to do the will of God. He was not discouraged. And I am saying to you this morning, whatever you might be going through, don't be discouraged. There is purpose in your pain. And being a leader or being somebody in authority, it entails suffering and pain. As a leader, if you are not willing to accept the pain and suffering as an essential part of leadership, then you cannot be the leader God wants you to be. Pain and suffering comes with leadership. It comes with leadership. Look at the final product of gold. You see how gold is pretty. But there is a process to get the gold to look so beautiful. There is a process. You get the raw gold. First, when you get the raw gold, it has to be melted. It has to be pressed. It has to be stretched. It has to be molded and shaped and make and be the final product it is for today. So too, we as the raw material must be melted in Christ. We must be tried and tested with pain and suffering. And at the end, when our ways please God, his name will be glorified through our lifestyle. His name will be glorified. I want to encourage you this morning to step out of your comfort zone and do something that is worthwhile for Jesus. Do something worthwhile for Jesus. Just as how Moses, how God told Moses, I am with you, God would also be with you. 
he will be with you as well. God said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And God promises never fails. He never go back on his word. But we also have a part to play. We have our part to play. As I conclude this afternoon, I want to remind you and to, to tell you that it's time to step out of your comfort zone and do the will of God. It will not be easy. Sometimes it will be sudden. Sometimes it will be demanding. And sometimes it will be painful. But God will be with you in the midst of all this process. The Bible said that God's grace is sufficient to keep us. His grace is sufficient. God will be with you in your darkest hour. He was there in my darkest hour. He will be with you as well. So I just want to encourage you this morning and I want to leave this with you this morning. You know, whenever you're going through a situation, whenever you replace why is this happening to me with what God is telling me, what God is trying to show me, it changes everything. Don't question God and say, God, why is this happening to me and why is this happening? Replace that with God. What are you trying to tell me? That will change everything and it replaces everything. Don't give up today. Don't be discouraged. And I hope that the word that I minister to you this morning bless your heart and encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and do something for God. God bless you. It is indeed. <laughs> After a while, it can almost sound cliche, you know, when the pastor or the chairman that comes out and says, what a tremendous word. <laughs> God is a great God and he's trying to get our attention. So, Sister Sylvia, I want to thank you so much for yielding yourself to be the instrument in God's hand today. Please know that we will continue to pray for you. And um, I know we were here. I know some of us took notes, but Excuse number one from Moses, I'm not adequate for the task. Excuse number two, I don't know enough. Excuse number three, they won't listen to me. Excuse number four, I cannot speak. Somewhere between there and the transition while I was taking the text, from 1st Thessalonians 3, I didn't get excuse number 5, I'll be sure to get that from you. But then she went on to emphasize that God breaking you out of your comfort zone may happen suddenly. God breaking you out of your comfort zone will be very demanding. And it will be painful. So Sylvia, may God bless you. It's not easy to declare the word of God in its wholeness. 
people love to hear this is your day this is your day for the miracle and many times churches you know but I do thank God for you and may God continue to bless you brethren these are wonderful times look to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you came out to the building this morning oh good that is the lamest set of song I mean, you know, I'm really glad you come out, yes, boy. Come on, man. come on, man. And you know, they blame the mass. Why are you no shame, you know, boy? Eh? I'm glad you're here. And I do only my Christ. Bless the Lord. Glory. No, 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 no. I took it off, Ronald. Very sharp. Amen. Bless the Lord. Okay, um, I want to pray and bless you all before we do the last song. So, if we could all stand, please. And um, all of those who may have been feeling the prodding to jump up and say, I want to be part of all that's required as we go forward. Or if you don't have the notes for the message, I have it. All right, bless the Lord. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Father God, today we thank you for your people. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word, for your keeping power. And stretch my hands towards your people today. Go those before me and those behind me. Those, oh God, are looking at us online and those in the other building. I pray your blessings upon them, Father. Speak from heaven in the name of Jesus as they go forth this week. Bless them, preserve them, and keep them, protect them. Establish your word and your will and your way in them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare today, may the Lord our God make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember, I would like to see uh, the worship leaders. Well, because you all are accustomed to hangings, I'll leave you all for last. It didn't be long. Then um, I'll see Mahmoud and Bernard at first, and then Sister Sylvia, then you all. Really? to the king now unto the king eternal the immortal invisible the only wise god be on the ranch forever and ever amen amen be on the ranch glory forever and ever amen Amen. Amen. Be on our hands, glory for. Amen.